There are a couple of other selections in the Setup tab that will help you make your report more interactive. I'll show the drill down setting and the optional metric setting. Let's first go over the dimensions drill down option. To select the drill down, I'll first need to select the time series chart. Next, I open the Setup tab. Right now, there is only date as a breakdown dimension. Now, I'll turn the drill down option on and two more dimensions appeared, year and year month. I can change the name of the year month dimension to month by clicking on the pencil icon. I can also change the way the dimension is displayed. I can also add another time dimension by clicking the add dimension option. For example, I can add a weekly breakdown. Now I have established a hierarchy of year, month, week, and day. Let's see how this drill down works in practice. When you hover over the time series chart, you will see the errors. The report viewer can toggle select between them to show the data on different breakdown levels. It's good to keep in mind that even though I have a monthly breakdown, the date range control defines the time period I'm looking at. So months, in this case, might not necessarily be complete months. You can also use the drill down setting on a table, for example. Here, I have a campaign name and the asset name. Let's put the drill down option on. I can set the default selection to be on a campaign level and use the drill down to aggregate the data on different levels within one table. As you can see, the drill down option is a very powerful tool to aggregate your data on different levels, so you don't have to create too many graphs. There is an optional metric setting for your data source metrics. In this video, I'll show you how it works. I'm selecting the bar chart where I'm currently looking at impressions. If I click this optional metric setting on, I can add other metrics to the bar chart that won't be visible in the first view. Let's add clicks and CTR percentage. Once the optional metrics are added and I hover over the bar chart, I can find a new icon on the top of it. This is the optional metrics icon and I can see our newly added metrics under it. I can now go and select other metrics and the campaign in the bar chart will be sorted accordingly. Now that I have a dashboard created, let's take a look at some styling options for the dashboard. First, let's add a header. I'm going to use a rectangle from the Add Shape menu. Next, I'm drawing the rectangle shape at the top of the page. Then I can select a color for it from the right hand side. After that, I would like to move it behind our date range control so that I could see the control clearly. I can again arrange the elements either from the right hand side mouse click or from the arrange drop down from the main menu. Now, I'm going to style the date range control a bit too, so that I can see it better at the top of the header. I'm going to select the background color to be white, and then I want the corners to be rounded too. To remove the default shadow, I need to click the shadow on and off. Now the header looks better. Next, let's add a logo by clicking the Add Image button. You can either use a URL or upload the logo from your desktop. I'm going to fetch the logo from my folder on my computer. I'm going to move it on the top of the header, and now the header is ready. The first page is ready, but rather than adding more elements to one page, you might want to split your dashboard into several pages and sections. 
Let's add one page from the Add Page button. This opens the right-hand side panel for managing pages. Now it shows two untitled pages, so I can go ahead and rename these pages. Let's name the first page FA, as in Facebook Ads, Main, and then the second page could be named FA Campaigns. The button Add Page is changed to Pages, so you can flip through pages in the report. If you click Page, Manage Pages, you'll see the menu on the right-hand side where you can add new pages or sections by clicking a big plus sign. You can edit an individual page by clicking on three dots next to the page or section's name. For example, you can select icons for your pages or sections. You can also rename and delete them from this menu too. And you can change the order of the page and sections by dragging and dropping. And now you've learned how to organize your report with page and section management options. Something to be aware of when adding pages is that any control that you create is only affecting the page it is added to. Let me demonstrate how it works. I'm going to copy the impression scorecard from page one to page two. However, now you can notice that the number of impressions is not the same and that is because the time range we're looking at is not the same. On the first page, I have date range control, and on the second page, I don't have it, so it's using a default date range. What we can do is set a control or element to be report level element. First, I'm going to move our date range control to another spot in the report, and I'm gonna explain why I did it in a bit. You can do this either from the drop-down menu when you right-click or through the main menu under Arrange, Make Report Level. Now, when I go back to page two, the same date range control is here too, and now the scorecard impressions are matching on both pages. I move the element away from the header because the report level element's position, by default, is at the bottom of the report, meaning it would have disappeared when I did the change. Let's move it to the top of the header so you can see that the header rectangle is at the top and we can only see a portion of the control component. Let's change this date range control back to a page level one and move it back to the top right corner. What I actually want to do is set this whole header to be a report level header. To do this, I need to select all elements from the top and now I can change them to be report level components. 